Eight minutes into the flight of Columbia, the orbiter 736 miles downrange, traveling almost 16,000 miles an hour, 70 miles in altitude, about 20 minutes before main engine cutoff, 20 seconds before main engine cutoff. The booster officer reports a nominal main engine cutoff, a perfect ascent to orbit for Columbia, standing by for external tank separation. And the external tank has been jettisoned, a perfect launch for Columbia, a perfect climb to orbit, Seven astronauts now setting off on a 16-day marathon scientific mission. And we copy uh, Houston, nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston, Columbia in its preliminary orbit. Everything in great shape as uh, the orbiter is now settled into an orbit uh, about 143 nautical miles above the Earth, standing by uh, for further activity on board. The post -Ohms 1 procedures. Everything is nominal, tail only control, not required. Okay, we copy everything nominal, tail only control, not required. Back here in the uh, Space Shuttle Flight Control Room, the ascent team of flight controllers led by Flight Director Leroy Kane, who have been on console since about 3.30 this morning, just uh, presided over a flawless uh, climb to orbit for Columbia. Kane, uh, the second from your right uh, at the Flight Director console, joined uh, to his right uh, by Capcom Charlie Hobaugh and the weather Capcom for today, Dwayne Carey. Steve Stitch on the far right of your screen, flight director, who will be one of the orbit shift flight directors during the STS-107 mission over the next 16 days, was the uh, weather flight director. Although there wasn't much to talk about today with the conditions flawless both at the Kennedy Space Center and over in Spain at the Trans-Oceanic uh, Abort Sites. So a perfect climb to orbit for Columbia, a good start uh, to a Manifest that will call for six shuttle flights this year. The crew uh, in its uh, post-insertion activities as uh, they begin to move away from the jettisoned external tank and prepare for the firing of the orbital maneuvering system engines about 29 and a half minutes from now. That will help uh, to circularize Columbia's orbit at about 153 nautical miles for the remainder of this microgravity science research mission. Over in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, a video of today's launch of Columbia was uplinked uh, through our KU band communications capability to the Expedition 6 crew aboard the International Space Station, Commander Ken Bowersox, Flight Engineer Nikolai Budarin, and NASA ISS Science Officer Don Pettit able to watch Columbia's climb to orbit. An on-time launch following a flawless and uneventful countdown today from the Kennedy Space Center. We see the MPS propellant dump complete. You 
you are go for the ET photo maneuver. Well, we copy Houston, uh, go for the ET photo maneuver, thanks. Coming up over the uh, next couple of hours, it will be a busy time on board Columbia as uh, the Ascent team uh, gets the crew settled in to their orbital activities. Again, uh, the firing of the orbital maneuvering system engines in what is known as the Ohms 2 burn, uh, essentially designed to circularize Columbia's orbit, is scheduled 27 minutes from now. Once uh, that's completed, uh, the crew uh, will begin uh, to configure some of the systems and uh, prepare for payload bay door opening, which is scheduled about an hour and a half into the flight. Once uh, the doors on Columbia are open to provide cooling for all of the uh, shuttle's systems and all of the scientific gear on board. We see good cooling on all three APUs. You are go for APU hide shutdown as published. Copy, Charlie. Go for APU hide shutdown as published. Once uh, Columbia's doors are opened, uh, the Ascent team will take a poll of all of the flight control positions here in the mission control room to get a go-no-go -no -go for orbital operations uh, to keep Columbia on orbit for all 16 days for its scientific work. Two and a half hours into the mission, Laurel Clark and Delon Ramon will preside over the activation of the SpaceHab Research double module in the cargo bay of Columbia and the start of the activation of uh, some of the early experiments uh, that will be activated in support of this multidisciplinary uh, science research flight. The blue team, pilot Willie McCool, uh, mission specialist Dave Brown, and mission specialist and payload commander Mike Anderson will begin an abbreviated six-hour sleep period four hours into the flight just after 1.30 p.m. Central Time this afternoon, while the red team presses ahead uh, to activate uh, most, if not all, of the uh, experiments on board, some 80 experiments uh, that uh, will be presided over in this dual shift scientific flight uh, in which scientific research will be conducted around the clock. Nice job on APU hide shutdown. For a big picture, we're tracking a TIG for your ohms two of four one colon one eight. It may be adjusted slightly, but that's a good number to work for for now. We're about a minute and a half from spreading. We'll be unable to talk to you for about one minute, but able to hear. Okay, we copy preliminary TIG of four one colon one eight in uh, about a minute now to spreading. Thanks. A good read back. Uh, Houston Columbia will put sauce and heater activation in work. We copy and ready for that.
This is Mission Control Houston, 18 and a half minutes into the flight of Columbia on this 16-day microgravity research mission. All three auxiliary power units have now been shut down by pilot Willie McCool. All of Columbia systems in excellent shape in the early stages of this marathon scientific research flight. 